Well, good evening and Merry Christmas. What a beautiful night it is. I'm delighted that everyone is here to worship with us and I'm glad to see that you brought your warm coats because if you saw the advertisements, we're beginning in here, we're ending out there. Uh, and I wanna welcome those who are joining us on Facebook and on Zoom. Um, so let's get started. When all other lights go out, a light shines in the darkness. When all other hopes fade, a new hope is born. When all other songs are stilled, an angel chorus breaks forth. Rejoice, tonight is a night of miracles. All of our uh, carols tonight are pre-recorded, uh, as you've already seen uh, our very own Dick Dundor. Uh, we do this because in order to um, uh, be cautious with the virus, we're not singing tonight until we go outside, but we didn't want you to miss out on the opportunity of Christmas carols. So I put the call out a while ago for members of our church to record Christmas carols and send them to me. And as you will see tonight, we got a wonderful response. So now we have, I'll come all ye faithful. There is one thing that we can always do, whether we are gathered here or gathered far away. When we pray together, our hearts come together in God because God is the source of our love and our life. So now let us raise up our hearts together and let us pray to God. Oh, I'm sorry, before we do, um, you will notice that we do not have um, Dick here tonight. Uh, the reason for this is, um, Janet, uh, his wife, is in the hospital, and uh, she's in rather tough, tough shape, um, although she was looking a little better today. So um, I told Dick that tonight, instead of being an organist, he needed to be a husband and a father. And so he is at the hospital with Janet, and uh, we will be praying for Janet and for the whole family uh, as, as they, as so many others do, continue to battle this virus. Now let us pray. God, thank you so much for bringing us all together tonight. We thank you for those who are here and those who are joining us virtually. And we especially give you thanks for the technology that makes it possible for us to be together even when we are so far apart. We pray, God, that you would join our hearts together as we come to worship the miracle of miracles and gift of gifts. That is your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. That baby in a manger came to be so much more than his mother and father may have ever imagined on that first holy night. He came to be our hope, our peace, our joy, and our love. That baby came to give us life by giving up his own. And so that is what we celebrate tonight. 
As different as so much of this is, what remains the same is the point of our celebration. So we raise our hearts to you and ask that you would be with us here and wherever we worship as we praise you and sing, sing praises to Christ our King. Amen. Throughout the season of Advent, we have lit our Advent candles, and we have been reminded that Advent hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. And Advent peace stills us. We all know this through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so it is time that we set aflame the Advent affirmation by lighting the candle of Christ. Recognizing that he is born, he is with us. We believe that Jesus is the son of Mary, that he was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He is our long-awaited Messiah, whose coming was pro prophesied from days of old. This same Jesus now lives in our hearts today. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled. Our love is consummated. Our joy is complete. And our peace is sealed. Rejoice! A savior is born. A savior is born indeed. Joy to the world. Thank you. 
I'm gonna have the kids stay right where you are, but this time is for you. So if you wanna stand up, this is the special children's time. And I have a video for you because you know sometimes people get a little confused about what this day and what this season is all about. Some people think that it's all about Santa. And certainly Santa is a lot of fun. I have the NORAD Santa tracker on my phone, so I can report that um, Santa is en route um, to all of your houses. He has already left. He left several hours ago, so he is making his way around, and uh, NORAD does a very good job accompanying him, uh, and so I double-checked that to make sure that he was all good. So Santa is on his way, but... It's not really about Santa, is it? Who is it about, Cam and Corey? You guys know? Who? It is. And sometimes we all need a reminder of that. So this video will remind us of the reason for the season. So Jesus really is the reason for the season. So let's say a prayer and ask God to help us keep Jesus in our hearts all the time. God, thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you for all of his love and all that his love has made possible. Even as much as we get excited about Santa and other parts of Christmas, help us always to remember that Christmas is Jesus's birthday. Amen. Thanks guys, and um, on the way out, uh, my, my friends in the back, they have something special for you when you're headed outside, so you make sure to get that. Um, and something um, for, uh, make it even more special when we go outside. All right, now we have the first Noel.
Our first scripture today comes from Isaiah's prophecy. There's a lot of Isaiah's prophecy that we could look at on uh, Christmas, but tonight we're going to look at chapter 52, verses 7 through 10. Here is what Isaiah writes for all of us. He says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news, the good news of peace and salvation. The good news that the God of Israel reigns. The watchmen shout and sing with joy, for before their very eyes, they see the Lord returning to Jerusalem. Let the ruins of Jerusalem break into joyful song, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has demonstrated his holy power before the eyes of all the nations, all the ends of the earth, We'll see the victory of our God. You know, there's a lot that uh, because of COVID, we're not able to do in the way that we would like to. I would dare say we would have at least three times as many people in here uh, if it wasn't for that, but we wouldn't be reaching out across the country as we are now able to do on the internet. And we might be able to sing in person, but then we wouldn't have been able to be treated to all that you've already heard and all that you're about to hear. And we might be able to have readers but that would rob us of this opportunity now. Presenting Luke 2, the Christmas story. Everyone 
raise a child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth the first, firstborn son, who wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them. And they were in the same country as shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And look, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you a tiny great joy, which shall be to all of you. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ. And many thanks to the uh, Egler and Doster family. The Luke 2 Christmas story is a wonderful story, but when you have four generations come together to share it, it makes it even more special. And I, for one, loved seeing Bill do that again. Our last scripture today comes from John's Gospel. It's from the first chapter, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 14. John writes this. In the beginning... The Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. 
The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought forth light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God, we do give you thanks. On this night, this holy night, as we gather together, we know that you are here. The word become flesh and living among us and now living within us. We pray that you would speak to us as we meditate on your word tonight. Amen. What a beautiful night. A different night, to be sure. Different than any Christmas Eve I think I can ever remember. And uh, maybe any Christmas Eve than we will ever know. But beautiful nonetheless, don't you think? You know, one of the first pieces of advice that I ever received from an early mentor of mine about preaching I was told no matter what else you preach on any other Sunday of the year, when it comes to Christmas and Easter, make sure you're preaching celebration because that's what these holy days are about. They're about celebration. But you know, this year, as I was putting together the service and, and in particular the sermon for tonight, I found it more difficult to focus on celebration than I ever had in the past. I mean, it felt like waxing poetic about Jesus being born in a manger on that holy night might seem superficial and possibly even tone deaf in the midst of all that we're dealing with, continuing to deal with the difficulties, the threats, the fears, the losses. And all that we are continuing to do, I didn't know how I could stand up here and celebrate as though none of it was going on. And then it dawned on me. It's actually because of all of this that we're celebrating tonight. You see, the baby in the manger came because of times like these, not in spite of them. Our world is not the world that God created it to be. If it was, Jesus wouldn't have needed to be born. We wouldn't have needed a savior because we never would have been lost in our relationship with God. And so the very circumstances and situations that we are struggling with as a country and as a world, not to mention whatever we might have going on in our own lives, this is actually what the celebration is all about. It's all about those difficulties and fears that have permeated our life and our world, that a baby was born in a stable on a still and starry night so many years ago. In fact, that's why I love John's nativity story so much, because it speaks to this wonderful celebration of Jesus's birth. Now, I realize that the scripture I just read to you from John's gospel doesn't sound like the Christmas story that we're accustomed to. You certainly wouldn't be able to put together a nativity based on what I just read, and it sounds very different from what we had presented by the Egler and Doster family from Luke's version of the nativity. And yet, as different as this story might be, different from what we're accustomed to, it actually points to the most important part of Jesus' coming. You see, Luke gives us a lot of details. Luke tells us the what about everything that happened on that first holy night, but John, John gets to the heart of the matter. He skips over the details and he gets right to the why. Why did Jesus come? As you heard me read, John makes it clear. He says that Jesus came to be the light and the life of all people. As we discussed the other night in the blue Christmas service, he is the one that the prophet Isaiah foretold the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Jesus is our great light. 
And he told us as much during his ministry, saying very clearly, I am the light of the world. That's why we light the Christ candle on this night, to remind us of the light that he came to bring into our world and into our lives. You see, Jesus came not in spite of, but because of the darkness in our world. Because of the darkness as a result of Rome back in his day, and as a result of all that we're going through now. The pandemic, the deaths, the racial injustice, the ideological divisions, and all that we have lost and aren't able to do this year. All that darkness that comes into our lives and threatens to overwhelm us, that's why he was born, to shine that light, to dispel the darkness, and to guide our steps forward so that we could find our way to the hope and peace and joy and love that he came to bring into our lives. But most importantly of all, Jesus was born to bring us life. As John says, the word that is Jesus gave life to everything that was created. And Jesus continues to give us life. That's why he came. He is the bringer of life. And in John's gospel, more than any of the others, John really focuses on this aspect of Jesus's mission and purpose. Jesus came to bring life into our world and into our lives. He records many of Jesus's teachings and promises about life, including the time that Jesus told his disciples, I have come so that you might have life and have it in abundance. People have sometimes taken that out of context, thinking that Jesus is only talking about having a lot of money if we believe in him. That's not what he's talking about at all. While he doesn't begrudge any of us having whatever we earn, when Jesus talked about life in abundance, he was talking about something much more important than mere wealth. He was talking about something that survives through this world and into the next. And what he was talking about, that life that he brings and the life in abundance, that's what we're celebrating tonight. That is what will bring light into our lives. So what is this life that Jesus brings? Well, John tells us that as well as we study his gospel. The aspect of Jesus's life that John talks about more than any other is eternal. Jesus's life is eternal. Jesus came to bring us eternal life. But that's not new, right? We've heard that before. That's, after all, the message of Easter. It kind of bookends Jesus's life. He was born to bring us life, and he died to ensure eternal life. But here's the question tonight. Do we really know what eternal life is? Eternal life is Jesus's life. It's the life he came to give us. He came to give us his eternal life. But do we have any idea what this really is? I'll give you a hint. It is not simply living forever. Sometimes that's how we talk about it, isn't it? Eternal life is life forever. But here's something to think about. Not all life lasting forever is a good thing. I mean, if the quality of life is not good, do you really want to have it forever? After all, to the best of our knowledge, given what the Bible writes, hell is forever too. But that's not the eternal life that Jesus came to bring to all of us. No, the life that Jesus lived himself and came to bring into our lives, the true meaning of eternal life, which by the way can be lived in this world and the next, just as Jesus did. This is a life of quality, not just quantity. It's a life with God. This is the life that we were actually created for. As you've heard me say in the past, it's the life that Jesus lived and continues to live even now. And the best news about this life is that we don't have to wait to get to heaven. This life that Jesus lived in this world is available to us in this world. That's what he was born to bring us. That is the life that he was born to make possible for us, the life that he wants us to have in abundance. 
that life with God that knows the hope and peace and joy and love that only comes from knowing God's promises are true. It's that life that comes from knowing that God's presence in our lives is complete and unending. And it is a life continually and consistently immersed in the all-powerful, life-giving love of God. This is eternal life. And this is the life that Jesus lived and came to bring us. This is the life that we celebrate with that baby in the manger, the abundant life that Jesus was referring to. It's so much more than just existing, than just being able to draw breath. You could say that it is life with a capital L, and I would add a, ca a capital I-F-E. This is what we celebrate tonight. And this is why as different as this night might be, as much as we are not able to do, it is still a very holy night. So let's celebrate tonight and every night because no matter what happens tomorrow or even tonight, no matter what we're dealing with or struggling through, we have the life and the light that Jesus came to bring us. That is a constant. And as we heard in John's gospel, the darkness cannot overcome this life and death cannot overcome the light and life that Jesus came to bring us. He is our life, our eternal life. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will never overcome it. That's what this night assures us of. And that's why we celebrate. So Merry Christmas. Amen. As we turn to our Christmas prayer, uh, I want to start out by um, reading a Christmas letter from Jesus. When you look for me at Christmas, you won't need a special star. I'm no longer just in Bethlehem. I'm right here where you are. You may not be aware of me amidst the celebrations. You'll have to look beyond the stores and all the decorations. But if you take a moment from your list of things to do, to close your eyes and say a prayer, I'm waiting here for you. You're the one I want to be with. You're the reason that I came. And you'll find me in the stillness where I'm whispering your name. Let us pray. God, on this still very holy night, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for that baby in the manger who came to bring life and light into each and every one of our lives. Remind us, God, to not leave this gift unwrapped this Christmas time. Remind us to embrace it and to live into it, not only at Christmas, but on every day so that that light can be our guide and that life will be the abundance that we live in and the joy that we know. There is so much going on in our world right now, God. There are empty chairs and tables that should have been filled. There are people who are not home for one reason or another. And we pray for each and every family who is missing someone. We pray for those who have loved ones serving in the military and overseas. We especially lift up Adam and Cameron as they are serving with the 180th Fighter Division in Afghanistan. We pray for their families as they're missing them this Christmas. We pray for all of our military men and women as well as those who stand in the gap on the front lines, our doctors and nurses, our uh, first responders, police, fire, and EMS, 
and also all of those who work behind the scenes, those who daily put themselves out so that we might have what we need and be cared for as we need. We pray, God, that you would keep each one safe. We pray for those like Janet who are struggling even now with this terrible virus that has descended upon our world. And we pray, God, that you would work to dispel this virus from our lives and show us the ways that we can partner with you. Show us also, God, how we can bring the hope and the peace and the joy and the love into other people's lives, even as Jesus has brought it into ours. As we worship tonight, God, let this not be an end to our Christmas celebration, but rather let the celebration, the life that Jesus came to bring us, continue on in our hearts and through our lives throughout the year and well beyond. Because in this way, it truly will be a Merry Christmas, not just on one day, but on all days. We pray all of this in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Get ready for cuteness overload. Um, just before we transition to the next part, um, really quick, a, a little public service announcement. Uh, this Sunday, the celebration of Christmas really does continue. And so this Sunday, whether you join us online or in person, we have our COVID Christmas pageant that is entitled Breaking News. And you are not going to want to miss what this breaking news is because it's pretty good news for all of us, and it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, uh, another creative way we've been able to celebrate Christmas. You know, Jesus not only said that he was the light of the world, he then later in his ministry spoke to his disciples and to all of us who call ourselves his followers, and he said, you are the light of the world. Jesus made it very clear before he left this world that we are to pick up where he left off, giving us one final commandment, that we love one another as he has loved us. In all of these ways, we can be that light in the world. We can dispel the darkness for those around us, even as Jesus does. Because he lives in our lives, his light shines through us as we enable it to. And so, in celebration of that, we are going to go outside and we are going to share the light of Christ. It's a little bit different this year, so go ahead and put your coats on. For those of you who are at home, we are going to be transitioning the cameras and the microphones. Bear with us just a moment. Follow the instructions of the ushers. Make sure to grab one of the candles that is in, in your um, pews because we will not have them for you outside. And, um, and let's go outside. And uh, you guys have been listening to singing long enough. Now it's your turn.
everything that we do is an adventure this year. So, um, but uh, I wanted to make sure that if we didn't get to do anything else, you got to sing Silent Night. So um, uh, let us um, let us begin by sharing the light of Christ.
Yeah, I think so. It'll be freezing in here. 